guys and welcome to my office tour this is the first time i have had a chance to really show off my office to you guys we've been here for about a year now too and you have made this place home it has been amazing this office is not only the space that i get to share with my beloved birdos who are demanding a bedtime very soon so this may not be a very long tour for their sake and my geckos in case you guys didn't know i do have crested geckos but it is also the space where i create our adventures and it is the space where i am able to really show off and display some of the amazing aspects of our community. All of the love and the support and the amazing fan mail and beautiful creations you guys have sent in become integrated into my home, into my my favorite place in the world. I have to admit, no matter where we travel, even when we went to Hawaii for that really special trip for my mom this February, I was thinking about my office. I was thinking about home and whenever I just need a few minutes to recharge, laying down in my love sack, which is really awesome. I got it as a gift to myself for reaching 100,000 subscribers and it was like on a 60% off sale. Pretty awesome. But I like to flop down in it, look around and just see how you guys have changed my life. I absolutely love it in here and I'm going to miss it for the two months that I'm in Taiwan. By the time you guys see this video, I'm going to be in Taiwan and I'm going to be in an entirely new environment creating adventures for us in an entirely new place. And I know that's going to be a fantastic experience, but it just feels really good to know that this is where my heart is right here at home and that you guys have helped to create this with me. So I thought, why not give you guys a tour? And that way when I'm feeling a little homesick, all I have to do is watch the vlog and you guys will also see how you have really, really changed my life and really affected everything down to the way that the very space that I spend almost my entire day in is built. So I want you guys to see uh, the contributions you've made to my wonderful home. I want you to see where it all happens. I want you to bask in the greenery with me and I'll also have the chance to show off quite a few interesting specimens to you guys too. So first up behind me, you can see the ever popular Got Bug poster. And I actually used to run a reptile rescue with a couple of my friends years ago when word got out that we liked reptiles and we could take care of them. And the next thing you know, people were leaving them on our front door all of the time. My wonderful friend Dee ended up taking in most of them. She was the home base for it all. I think my aunt probably would have skittered up a wall if I had tried to bring home the, you know, 11 foot rainbow boa at that time. But we were really into reptiles. And so a gift one of my amazing friends gave me back then is this awesome Got Bug poster. This is a Toke Gecko. If you guys don't know about them, totally look them up. They're really cool. I really think that this is a fantastic conversation piece because every time people see it, they comment on it, and then I get to just talk their ear off about reptiles, which is awesome. But over in this corner is also a poster from one of my favorite people, Bird and Moon, who has a webcomic, uh, makes these posters, and I have two of her posters in this room. One of which is a few women naturalists to know. I highly recommend you guys check out Bird and Moon. She makes nature-related webcomics. Completely awesome. Oh, and then as we walk around the room, you're going to notice there's a lot of jewelry all over the place. I'm a little bit of a, like, dragon collector hoarder when it comes to jewelry, especially fun, funky jewelry, or especially jewelry that people have given me as gifts. In this case, this bead necklace was a gift from my father after he went to Hawaii to visit with his mother's relatives after she passed away and he brought it back as a gift so it sits right over here so I can see it I haven't had a chance to wear it yet but maybe one day then that little pieces turtles from ochre coke I love to collect artwork artwork and unique jewelry from the places that I visit who knows what I'm going to try to bring home from Taiwan especially once we start visiting the night markets that's gonna be awesome but this piece is from ochre coke island when I went on a trip with my parents there their very first trip ever in like what was it 28 years of marriage at that point and they invited their eldest daughter along just cuz then over here the wall of fan art the wall of fan art and art that is so close to my heart for those of you who don't know i'm from a family of artists actually so as we tour the room you are going to see many of the pieces my family has created including this piece that many of you guys may remember from uh, i think it was two years ago <laughs> 
Uh, maybe it was just last year. Maybe it was just last year, my 27th birthday, not my 26th. But this is a sunflower that my mom made for me. My mom's a fantastic artist. She actually used to run her own business a uh, long, long time ago. Two businesses, actually. One, she made designs for quilts, and she sold quilt designs, quilt patterns. Uh, she created sticker designs and scrapbook designs for a scrapbook company who would then print the stickers out. I'm actually thinking about seeing if, uh, as she continues to recover and gains her art skills back from her heart attack earlier this year, if she'd be willing to try making us some sticker art and maybe even some pins and things. Amazing artist. I would love to incorporate some of her work into our, our future merchandise. Furniture? That's a whole different level of merchandise than what I would be thinking about. But over here we also have another piece of art from another amazing artist in my family, my brother. This is a dragon piece my brother actually made. Whoa, where is it? There we go. But my brother made that for me when he was in third grade. <laughs> And I have kept it since he gave it to me all the way back then. It travels with me across the country. Every single home I have ever lived in, I have kept with me. And he gave that to me because I am the year of the dragon uh, in the Chinese zodiac, which is the only zodiac my family's ever really thought was that cool. Except for my mom. She was always a little upset that she was born in the year of the rat. Hmm. Not the coolest thing for her, at least in her opinion. And then over here we have some artwork by Katie and you're gonna find a lot of treasures that Katie has sent us in her amazing snail mail boxes all over the room. They really define a lot of the personality of the room too, which I absolutely love. But you'll see some of her art over here. I believe Sophia made this beautiful wolf piece for us. And yeah, I, I don't remember off the top of my head everybody's name on the fan art that I have up on the walls. And we've actually started to put fan art in the hallway too. but. I try really hard and I write on the back of every single one I put up where it came in, who it came from. I know this piece up here is actually from Fanny and she was, uh, oh gosh, when did she send that? Fanny sent this ages ago, but she's a really cool mom who watches with her child. So that's what I love about the fan art too. You'll notice that I remember stories about everything in my office. It's not just for decoration. It's part of a huge collection of adventure that we have in my room and I have stories behind everything. I won't keep your guys like here too long talking about their stories this time, but we can do future office tours and maybe even tour stories, office stories, which sounds boring until you realize I've got things like ancient Chinese or ancient Japanese, excuse me, the ancient Chinese pieces are on the other side of the room but a uh, antique Japanese jewelry box. So that's actually from the early 1900s that my grandparents got me uh, from one of their friends who got it while serving over in Japan. So yeah, I've got all sorts of little knickknacks and pieces scattered through my whole room that have stories like that. We may not go into all of them tonight for sure, especially because those birdos are fussy and demanding sleep because it is pitch black outside and that means it's birdie bedtime. But in the future, we could probably very happily go through and tell more stories. And I'm really looking forward to the opportunity one day to get down here. <laughs> to this bottom shelf and this shelf right here is actually fan art. All of these binders that you see here and actually about four and a half other binders that are in my closet and I need to rotate these books out to make room for, all of these are actually binders full of fan art. I'm not kidding. It's been amazing. Every single fan mail piece I've ever gotten I have kept and I have put them into these binders. Carefully protected. Oh look at the slimes. Oh this was the slime drawing Nico made us. And I have put each and every single piece in here. I reread them. I will pick up our fan art binders and plop down into my love sack when I need a little pick me up and I will reread through all of this fan mail. It gives me so many ideas. It makes me so happy to see all of the stories everybody has loved, all of the ideas they come up with. Oh, look at everybody. And it is one of my favorite things to do. The age range is so amazing. We have really young viewers and then you'll flip a few times and the next thing you know, you're looking at somebody who happens to be like in their, their 20s or 30s or even their 50s. We have a few grandmothers who watch. I think the oldest person I know who is in our community is in her 80s, which is absolutely amazing. But I love flipping through our fan art. Oh, and if you're wondering about all of that fan mail up on the wall, I actually rotate it. Oh, 
and you can see our little sign also made by an amazing uh, fan there we go amazing community member I love it but I rotate the fan art that goes up on the wall pretty often usually once every couple months just to give it something fresh and to give different people an opportunity to have their art up on the wall and to think about what they have created what stories they enjoyed I really like going back and and seeing things that maybe I hadn't been doing for a while like zoo crafting and remembering how special it was and if I wanted to bring it back and it's really worked I, I went through a whole bunch of our zoo crafting fan mail when I was in the mood to do zoo crafting and it gave me so many ideas and I'm really happy we restarted it and then speaking of more gifts from fans, this is actually the shelf that is dedicated to all of the little animals that everybody has given me. And how did they get messed up? This is a carrot fish that someone made for us from our zoo crafting series. And I like to shift these guys around now and then. Sometimes I get requests to do like little stop animation stories with everything, but I have no idea how I do that. I think my niece would adore that if I did that though. But we've got a whole bunch of pieces here. We have one of Katie's boxes, two of Katie's boxes actually. Oh, the little antelope never wants to stand up. I suppose he's been dinner. There we go. <laughs> But we've got some awesome warrior cats made out of the little bands, those little uh, snappy rubber bands. This is one of Katie's amazing boxes. It has some of her letters and all sorts of bits and pieces inside. Another one that contained my giraffe, which is actually hiding in another bookshelf. And I like to rotate these out. This, these are not the only figures I have. I just designated this shelf as our zoo. And I rotate things in and out as we get new items. And as I'm in the mood to like see something different or something new so whenever you're watching our streams or watching when we're doing face cam stuff you'll see this stuff change pretty often and then up here is a shelf dedicated to seashells and you can tell there is a very special seashell here this is actually an Australian conch that my mother gave me as you guys know from my vlogs over on the vlog channel my mother is a seashell collector she's not a professional seashell collector but she has a deep passion for it she's an artist and especially now that we're still waiting to see how her hand-eye coordination and thinking goes to bring back her ability to do color and to do her art she's really devoted herself to things that are already come colored like these beautiful seashells and so all of the seashells over here are gifts from my mother that she gave me this one it, was it the mermaid's purse I can't remember what this one's called but it's just a really beautiful spiky shell we have beautiful twirly shells one that looks like a little heart it reminds me of like a special seed um oh what was this one called like the pimp Pimpwincia. It's like some sort of shell that has this ridiculous name that makes it sound like a, a pimple or something like that, which just, that's the most unfortunate name for such a cool shell. But she gave me all of these when I went to visit her for my brother's wedding in April, and I actually have the vlogs of that, and I showed off her entire collection of literally hundreds, probably definitely thousands of seashells that she has at home. And she gave me some of her most beautiful and some of the most colorful ones and she's always promising to send more so we'll have to see if she's going to but over here i put in some of the warrior cats fan art with crow feather and sea whisper i almost said uh sea feather again but they're here looking over the ocean before the tragedies happened inside of our sims 3 warrior cat series and i thought not only is that one of my all-time favorite pictures ever and an amazing moment and i love how their tails are twined really showing that particular scene but it was the ocean scene and so i thought it was perfect for being able to put the seashells in over here and then these, she these seashells are actually from Isla, uh, Isla even. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. I always pronounce your name wrong. But she is one of our longest term viewers. She's been around for several years and sent some of the very first snail mail. And her seashells come from Hawaii because she lives in Hawaii. And they have been so precious to me. And I always keep them out where I can see them because it meant so much to get some Hawaiian seashells. And I just, I loved it. It was my very first time ever having something from Hawaii myself before I was able to go. And I never found a seashell nearly as good as the ones she sent us um, as on, on the beaches of Hawaii myself. 
So yeah, like I said, I can go into so many different stories for everything in my office. I'm not going to continue doing that because my birds are really fussing to go to sleep and I definitely have to get ready to leave for Taiwan soon. But I just wanted to give you guys a preview of some more of the amazing things on this bookshelf. I actually plan on getting another bookshelf this size to start putting up more of my specimens and to start putting up more of your guys' uh, beautiful, amazing fan creations that have been coming in. I've run out of shelf space for the most part, so I need to get another bookshelf it's probably gonna go over where the um the crested geckos are because I plan that's a very old tank it's a really nice exoterra tank I got it for my birthday years and years ago my mom and dad saved up for like months to get it for me and I am going to actually be upgrading the crested gecko tank hopefully getting them multiple tanks I never planned on having so many crested geckos but that reptile rescue I used to run at one point I ended up with 11 crested geckos because they had nowhere else to go thankfully I was able to rehome almost all of them but I kept my favorite favorite three and I just need to get them some more tanks so that they have their own space and I also want to get them some upgraded tanks. So we're going to be doing some vlogs in the future or maybe even some specimen spotlights focusing on building them their own tanks and making some really tripped out really nice Crescagato tanks in the future and hopefully somehow whatever I use over there will fit in another bookshelf so I'll have more space to put your guys stuff too. Speaking of your guys stuff, you're gonna find it scattered everywhere. You're gonna find it on the sides of the bookshelves. You're going to find it tucked onto the bookshelves. You can actually find, let me show you guys, right over here, we've got our brand new wolf that we just got from our snail mail last week. We have the Animal Crossing cards somebody sent me. I'm very, very happy with those. I keep them next to my happy home designer to remember to be able to play. We have the little Siri, beautiful little Siri stone that Winter and her sister sent me last week. And then we've got Captain Snugglebug. This is our Snugglebug tiger sent from Katie and he actually pops off of this bookshelf and snuggles with me quite often either while I'm doing work or while I am in the love sack. We've also got several little creatures that I've actually collected from all over the place hiding in my living wall which you guys helped to build with me and I'm still learning how to make it a living living wall. It's a trial and error process right over here and this was one of my biggest dreams for my office and I cannot believe I made it come true. It just took planning, it took time to save, and then I made something that had been like, oh, I could never do that. I'm, I'm just I'm just a Siri. I can't imagine living a life that cool. And I made it happen just by planning and saving and doing my research, and I have a living wall. I just need it to live, but we're getting there. We're figuring that out. Then, of course, my Gouldian finches, which were actually a gift, a male and a female Aussie and Persimmon. Persimmon unfortunately passed away a couple months ago, but Aussie and many of his children, all the other birds in there are his kids too. Yeah, hi guys, I know we're almost done. I'll let you go to sleep soon. They want the lights off so bad, they're fussy. But they are over here in their brand new cage. It is significantly larger than the cage I used to have for them. My dream would be to have an aviary for my birds, but that's gonna take a little while for sure. A lot more episodes, Siri, a lot more episodes before I can do that. But it's a fantastic cage for Gouldian finches. I really went very light this time on the plants, so they have tons and tons of flight space. And I absolutely adore having my wonderful birds as my partners all day long. You hear them in almost every video but I'm totally okay with that because it means so much for me to have them as my companions. And then of course you've got more of Katie's presents. Her tiny hat, a hibiscus given uh, to us by Katie, and the amazing when your heart is breaking joyful creation can heal beyond words. That's fantastic. That's one of the amazing paintings that Katie made for us. And we have a lei that I actually got when I went to my brother's wedding this April. I really loved it as good decoration for my birdos. And yeah, there's gonna be geckos everywhere. I collect these metal geckos, not just this specific type. Ooh, actually, I forgot to show you a couple of the other metal geckos. There's metal geckos over here. There's a metal gecko over here. And I wanna be able to get more of them. I'm always on the lookout to gather up more. I think I have one that my little cousin, who I used to nanny gave me, Welcome to the top of my desk, by the way. I'm pretty sure I have one that my little cousin gave me somewhere around here. I just can't remember where, but I've got geckos all over the place. So yeah, I absolutely adore being able to uh, collect all sorts of little things, but among my collections are the little metal geckos. And then over here, another one of the posters from Bird in the Moon. 
who I really love. Amazing things you, the reader, might find outside. This is a quickly drying, beautiful bouquet of columbine. When flowers are in season at our local farmer's market, Chips and I try to always keep at least one bouquet up here and one bouquet downstairs. And uh, I'm going to miss that. But we should be able to go to lots of flower markets while we're in Taiwan, so we should have plenty of flowers to enjoy. And when we come back, it will still be flower season here in Michigan. So you that's why you see constantly rotating flowers in the background of our up update vlogs because we try really hard to make sure that our home is full of liveliness and green and beauty and that for me that means plants and flowers and then behind there you can see that amazing poster. It's one of my all-time favorites. And then the YouTube plaque is hiding up there. It looks really nice in between. I put that one up higher because I think that's an important life message right there. And then we work our way down humidifier for the birds and the plants. We've got the really awesome pl uh, little piece that I got from Hawaii that has columbine petals inside of it. But this is a really cool sort of like lava rock bowl is what they're called. And this was in Hawaii. We found it in a gift shop and it is made by a local artist there. He does a great job of really showing off kind of a mix of Pele's volcanic, uh, volcanic rock and then this beautiful blue background to show the ocean. I really loved that. This is one of the rocks from Katie. Really cool. Like I said, you're going to find treasures from her all over the place. Place. A crab shell, lava rock, rock, and coral from Hawaii. The awesome niche creatures that were sent to us by Carrie from Australia. I do remember, even though I'm really bad with names sometimes, a lot of the people who have sent things in. Like this one right over here is a necklace from Victor that I keep out all the time so I can look at it and see it right here. Oh, and over here, this is a postcard that was sent in from Nirne. This has always sat here right next to two of my super important messages that I believe in. For small creatures such as we, the vastness is bearable only through love. That's by Carl Sagan. I printed that out years ago and I've kept that with me for a super duper long time. Another really important message to me, the grass is always greener where you water it. And I thought that was super important to remember too. And I also have over here, another hugely important message, live out your imagination, not your history from Stephen R. Covey. And I would actually put him up as one of the most influential people in my entire life because I read his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Families. He does do the people books, but I read Families years and years ago and that book changed my life. I read the people one too, but it didn't really have an impact because I always see myself as a member of a family unit. And reading that helped me how to be a really great member of a family unit. I actually have the copy down here. You guys probably saw it. Seven Habits of Highly Effective Families, right there. <laughs> if I had to pick two books that changed my life forever, it would be this one right here, and it would be Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now. These two stay in my bookshelf, along with a lot of other really amazing books. The Humans of New York book right over here, a autographed copy of Jeff Corwin's Living on the Edge from one of his talks I went to at Mizzou, uh, Mizzou way back when. Several special National Geographic magazines. I have actually stacks of National Geographic in my closet I'll show you guys one day. Uh, yoga balls, a positive psychology book, um, All Cats Have Asperger's Syndrome, which was an awesome book my mom gave me as a kid to really help me feel good. That was so cool. And then we've got just, oh, oh my goodness, like a ton of my textbooks are actually scattered around from, I mean, there's my obstetric textbook. I use it to press flowers now, but when I was studying to hopefully become a midwife in nursing, that's where that giant tome came from. It's huge. It's got like 800 pages in it, but yeah. <laughs> You can see my office is just so full of stories. It is so full of stories, you guys. How am I going to tell all of the stories in here? Oh, I love my home. I love my office. I love being here. I don't think I'm going to be able to tell you guys everything cool about my place just yet because there's just so much to it and I've only worked through half of it and I know I need to put my birds to bed but just a few more key things and then you'll just have to let me know what you want to learn more about when I get back from Taiwan because there's so many stories everywhere in here and I would love to show you guys more. So over here, very, very important shelves to me. 
This shelf right here is my mom's shelf. Like I said, she had her heart attacks, two of them back to back in February. And since then, she hasn't been able to really match colors or do art. And as an artist, that's heartbreaking. But she's recovering. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I pay for her in-home nursing so that she can have the therapy she needs to hopefully get to the point where I can start getting her monthly letters back. These are the monthly letters that she was sending me after she became obsessed with stamps. And that was one of my favorite things ever to look forward to. Oh, I loved getting these. Every single month a new one would show up and I put them on this shelf and I would take pictures and share them with her and tell her how important they were to me. And I keep telling her if she starts making them again, I'll let everybody know and she can have her own little Etsy and then she can get really excited because your cards might travel all over the world. So that's one of my dreams is for my mom to get an Etsy and to be able to share it with you guys and see her get super happy when people buy her really adorable cards. Because the thing is, the cards are from stamp, like the shapes are from stamps, but look closely, every single stamp has been hand colored. She used chalk and she used Coptic markers to hand color and hand shade every single one of these cards. They are not like, oh, they're just stickers put together. Look closely and you can see the stroke lines. She colored each and every one of those plumeria flowers and that parrot, or the toucan, excuse me. I just, I love her art and I cannot wait for her to be able to make more of it and to be able to share it with you guys. Oh goodness. <laughs> and then down here, we have one of my favorite creations ever, the most adorable mossy eye giraffe from Katie and complete with his own little enclosure. He lives right over here with my Tommy and Timmy amiibo. Okay, this guy deserves a little bit of a story. Hang on, I've got to tell you. So... <laughs> Chips is really good with math and I am not good with math and sometimes despite my best intentions my budget can get kind of wibbly because I'm just not very good with math or something will happen. I'm one of those people who you know Audubon will send me a message and say we need donations and I'll go oh okay I have to save the birds and that's really a good thing to do but I tend to forget to do all the numbers and then my budget goes wibbly. So Chips has been helping me to remember how to do the math properly and keep my budget in line. And he started joking around and saying, yes, yes, whenever I would report to him like, okay, I think if I put this much money here and this much there, then I can still make sure that these people are taken care of and that we have enough for this darling. And so he would go, yes, yes, like Tom Nook or Tommy and Timmy from the Animal Crossing series. So we had this joke about him being like uh, Tom Nook and then me becoming kind of like Tom Nook. And so I saw these guys on sale for like three bucks and grabbed them. And now I make little offerings to the Tommy and Timmy shrine to remind myself to learn how to be good with my budget and that sometimes, even though like the birds need help, I can help them in other ways than donating money just at that moment if it's not in the budget. So I found this dime while we were on a walk today, so I put forward the little offering to the Tommy and Timmy shrine because it cracks chips up so much whenever he sees that. And then over here we have a beautiful needlepoint given so long ago by one of our first members of our community and I have kept it always, our Stay Curious needlepoint. I absolutely love it. And then finally down here, we have a shelf dedicated to my sister, which is very new, which is why there's not too much on it just yet. But she and I have started doing a walking challenge to try to get fit together. So we're trying to really tone up our fitness. You're gonna see more about that on the vlog channel. And this is our pin board. Whenever we reach 100,000 steps on our pedometer, we buy two pins. One sister picks one pin, one sister picks the other pin, and then we put them onto our pin board or wear them as desired. And we've also started giving each other pens because we're just obsessed with them lately. I don't know why we're obsessed with enamel pens, but we are. So we have started giving each other pens just randomly as gifts. And she sent me this adorable little succulent one. And I do have more, I actually have Science is real and an adorable little red panda right over here that I earned from my pen steps. And then she also sent me a beautiful card I opened on snail mail and this is an absolutely adorable piece of fan mail from my niece. So my niece painted me a little birdhouse and I keep it right down here and sometimes I hide little treasures inside the top of it. So it lives down here on another one of my little family bookshelves. 
oh gosh, like I had a feeling the office tour might possibly take me a little bit, but I had no idea it would take me this long. So I'm going to have to just kind of gloss over one of the most amazing parts of my office, the desk area, and just kind of point out some things I love about it. And then when I come home from Taiwan, we'll do a more in-depth tour. I'll especially have a lot of specimens. Well, not like specimen specimens. You don't want to travel internationally with those whatsoever. But I'll have a lot of little trinkets, treasures, and hopefully some quirky jewelry to be able to show off to you guys and decorate in my office. So I'll show you just a few key features from the other places in my office that I love and we'll have to save the rest for when we come home from Taiwan. One of the things I absolutely love about my office is my new pitcher plant! It almost died and then I finally figured out how to give it tons and tons of water and it has been so happy. And I got this pitcher plant when we got to 80,000 community members, or was it 90? It was around then I got a pitcher plant. Back then I was getting a new plant every 10,000 subscribers as a treat to myself because I loved having the feeling of our garden actually growing, of our community growing in the way that a garden does as it got bigger. So I would get new plants to represent our growing community. And the pitcher plant has done amazing. Look at all of these pictures. It's just covered in pictures. I absolutely love it. There's so much over here. There's teeny tiny pictures and then there's big pictures and it just keeps growing and growing and I don't know if I'm going to have to prune it or something, but it's pretty amazing and I really love it. It's also hanging out up here on top of my desk where we have a whole bunch of interesting little treasures, a lot of which you guys have actually sent in to me. Also bonus points if you guys know which anime this is from. It's one of the few things I actually picked up at an anime convention oh so long ago. We've got a shelf dedicated primarily to treasures that my mother has sent me once more, such as So Thankful You Are My Daughter, a little book, uh, bookmark back here. Another. I'm going to be very happy if you guys recognize the anime this is from Treasure from the anime conventions I used to go to in Kansas City. More little treasures, some of whom are sent by you guys. More little geckos that I tried to collect. More little giraffes. I love collecting giraffes lately. You may recognize what is on our screen right over here. I'm really into giraffes. Here's more giraffes that Katie has sent right over here. There's more giraffes down here hanging out with Doli and hanging out with Pavo's creations. Pavo made this little squicken and this little dog and then we had some other amazing community members make the other piece in the shadow box. This really awesome, I actually know that CM made this flower right here and our adorable little Enderman we have right over here. Up on this shelf we have a whole bunch of things that I'll just have to show you guys the details of them another day. A lot of these, I actually made all of these pieces, little terrarium garden things, and we've got the little dodo. I'm going to be selling things like that on the Etsy once we come home from Taiwan. I have my little air plant that I got on a date with chips. Lots of little treasures I've gotten on a date with chips. Another gecko! Another one of my geckos, another one of my geckos. I love collecting geckos, but now I think I'm more into collecting giraffes, so that happens sometimes. How. I absolutely love Dolly. I rub her little antlers very gently for good luck whenever we're doing things in niche. I have all of my dice, my dice within a die, right over here for rolling when we're playing Warrior Cats the Untold Tales. I have an entire little chest from Guatemala, long story, that has a whole bunch of dice inside of it as well. I have the world's most adorable actual working custom amiibo from an amazing Etsy shop and it actually keeps my little Animal Crossing necklace my brother gave me for my birthday this year right inside of his little net but I love Nat so much he's my favorite of all of the little NPCs you can run into in Animal Crossing New Leaf so I got a custom amiibo made of him and it's the most amazing thing ever I have more treasures oh my gosh so many more treasures and not enough time to be able to show you guys, so we'll definitely have to show them off in a future vlog. But at least I'll be able to look at this. More little giraffe bits from Katie. More gifts from you guys. This was actually sent to me from the creators of Unravel back when it first came out. Oh. It's been amazing. You guys have sent me so many amazing things. I love all of the little Minecraft figures. People have sent those in to me. All of the Minecraft figures. Here's the awesome little pin set Katie sent me that I found by surprise at the bottom of a box. And then we've got my four leaf clover that somebody sent me too. I love it. We have a whole bunch of Pokemon cards and a whole bunch of Animal Crossing cards. Not this one. This one I actually opened. Dun 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 dun. It was the only card I really wanted and it was 
was the very first MPC card I ever got from a Mubo card set. It was amazing. But we've got that one up here, and we have Chips' little panda corner. This is actually the secret panda corner. I made this little octopus, by the way. So again, examples of things I'll be making in the future for the Etsy store. But we have Chips' little panda corner back here, and these are the pandas. People have sent in two chips, not all of them, but I keep guard and watch over the little panda figures people have sent in and the little panda art that they send to him. He thinks it's really cool, but I protect them, and I just show him whenever his collection of pandas people have generously given to him grows. It's so much fun to see even little corners dedicated to my other family members that you guys have helped contribute to as well. Huh, yeah, uh, my office is full of a lot more stories than I was really giving myself credit for, and my birds definitely need to go to sleep, and I definitely need to get ready to go to Taiwan and pack. So, I'm going to wrap this up by showing you guys the last of the things I really love about my office. My philodendron behind me. Do you notice something in its leaves? That's where I hang my earrings on the philodendron vine and I absolutely love it. So it's like I'm plucking my really fun earrings that come in all sorts of designs and styles. If they can hang because they've got the little like hook pieces, then they go up on the philodendron and I get to pluck them as like little blossoms, little awesome jewelry blossoms in the morning whenever I want to get into a certain mood for a different series. It's one of my favorite parts of the morning, to be honest. <sighs> All right, so I'm actually a little bit out of breath and I haven't even been able to show you guys everything about my room, like my little manga collection or my James Harriet books or the huge stack of joy journals that I have that are completed joy journals full of joy or my birding books or more of the gifts that Katie has given that have found their way around our room. Oh my gosh, there's a lot here. There's a lot of stories here and you guys can probably see where I draw so much of the inspiration for all of the things we do and so much of the gratitude and and just awe of what you guys have contributed and, and given to me. And this is my happiest place in the entire world. I love being here. I love being at the epicenter of so much greenery and creativity and so much kindness that you guys have sent my way in the form of letters and art and gifts and just your presence without you guys, without you being here, sharing these moments with me, letting those little ads run by, I would not be able to have made my living wall. I would not be able to have afforded Peapod, who is the computer who we make everything on. I would have not been able to be where I am in life. And so for me, sitting down, and even looking at the things that I got myself, like I purchased myself, I, I researched myself, even looking at the things that like Chips has given me, like Sergeant Nene here, who he drove two hours to get for me from a park in Hawaii when we were visiting there. All of that just reminds me how lucky I am to have you guys and how much you guys have changed my life. You have helped build my home with your, your time. Your time, those little tiny ads that just zip by built my home like this. And I cannot thank you guys enough for that support. It has changed everything. I have been able to make this a truly special sanctuary of creativity and greenery and goodness in my heart that I have been able to grow so much to be able to help my family, to be able to contribute to our community as a whole, to be able to create amazing stories. And it's all thanks to the time that you guys have chosen to share with me. So thank you so much for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I cannot wait to see what kind of adventures I'm going to be able to share with you guys this summer, especially in Taiwan. And I cannot wait to see where we are a year from now, when I'll actually be probably getting ready to leave for Tokyo. So it's gonna be busy. But I, I would love to see what this place looks like a year from now, and how our adventures together, how you guys, how my family and loved ones, have helped to change this environment and cultivate it into an even more amazing place. Thank you guys so much. I hope you've enjoyed the office tour. I know it was rambly, not really a surprise considering it's me. And I'm really looking forward to building a new Crusted Gecko Tanks with you guys. Looking forward to just bringing back some fun little trinkets to be able to hide around my room from Taiwan. That's gonna be really fun. And just sharing more adventures with you. 
So if you have any questions about The Office, feel free to ask. I know a lot of people ask like technical questions, but you know, fun stories are really fun. Uh, if you saw something that just seemed to catch your eye while we were panning around, let me know and I'd be really happy to answer those things in the comments and maybe even be able to do another vlog and really talk a little bit more in depth about the super special things hiding here in our office uh, when we get home. So, all right, I'm probably passed out right now in Taiwan trying to recover from being in a plane for 20 hours straight. I hope you guys are all having an amazing day, and I will, I and Sergeant Nene will see you next time. Bye, guys.